Ephesians chapter number 3, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he hath purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Lord, timely singing. We thank you, Lord, for Brother James and Miss Renee and their talent and their desire to use it for the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the precious scriptures and the precious promises of the Word of God. We thank you, Lord, to be able to stand and proclaim your truth one more time. Now, Father, as we, Lord, seek to give out what you have given me, I pray that, oh Lord, it would uh, find a lodging place in the hearts of the hearers of the message. May we truly embrace you and embrace your word and embrace the things of God. Oh Lord, may we truly learn... Uh, God, not to take for granted the privileges of the things of God. Now, I pray you'd help us these next few minutes. Help those that are viewing uh, online. I pray you'd encourage them and help them as well. Now, Father, get glory through all of this. God, be exalted. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll bless you and praise you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we do ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a few things as a way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, that Paul mentions the dispensation of grace. In verse number 2, it says, If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. My dear friends, if you're a student of the Bible, you understand that since uh, Jesus ascended... Uh, and went back to heaven, uh, a new dispensation uh, uh, from God was given to man. Prior to that, we lived under the law. Uh, and under the law, you had to keep the law, and you had to uh, obey the law. Uh, but more importantly, you had to be of the lineage uh, of Abraham. You had to be a Jew in order for the law to be of effect to you. Uh, uh, the only way you could get to God, uh, uh, if you was a Gentile, you had to make yourself a servant uh, to a Jew, and then uh, you had to seek to keep the law as well. Uh, but my dear friends, uh, uh, the law could not make a man perfect. Uh, uh, the law could not make uh, a man fit for heaven. Uh, the law was given as our schoolmaster to show us contrary uh, that no one in themselves uh, was worthy to go to heaven. Uh, uh, can I say, my dear friends, uh, Jesus Christ came uh, uh, as the Lamb of God uh, uh, to fulfill uh, the very law of God and to also uh, uh, make uh, uh, into fruition all the lambs and all the go go 
goats and all the bulls that have been sacrificed before that pushed back the sins of the people. Uh, Jesus came to be the perfect lamb to take away the sins of the people. Uh, and thanks be unto God, uh, He not only came to be a lamb to fulfill the law, uh, but He was the righteous branch. Uh, and He grafted in a branch into the vine uh, and made a way uh, uh, where all men, uh, Jew and Gentile alike, could be saved by the grace of God. Uh, we don't live under law, but for the last 2,000 years, uh, we have lived under the dispensation of grace. Uh, uh, grace says, uh, I deserve hell, uh, but I'm not going to go to hell because God uh, uh, is imputing unto me His unmerited favor because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, grace says you don't get what you deserve, uh, you get what you need. Uh, and what I needed was forgiveness of sins. Uh, what I needed was God to do a work in me that would make me a vessel that could go to heaven. Uh, can I say Paul is uh, instructing to the church at Ephesus uh, about the dispensation of the grace of God. Uh, and here some 2,000 years later uh, we can look back and enjoy what we have come to know of the grace of God. Uh, we find the dispensation of grace. We also find that Paul mentions uh, a divine revelation. Look with me in verse 3. He says, how that by revelation, He, who, the Lord, made known unto me the mystery. What mystery? That God had put all this together in His mind and in motion long before He ever made the world. Look what He says. Uh, I wrote a four and a few words, whereby when you read, uh, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, uh, who in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto His holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs uh, and of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. You see, Jesus was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And it was predestined from God that all men could be in Christ and be saved. Uh, and I'm thankful that God made a way and that even Gentiles could be in the body of Christ. Uh, we see this divine revelation of this mystery. And then I want you to notice uh, 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 this divine revelation, this dispensation of God is now giving way to what Paul uh, is about to divulge, and that is the true mystery. Paul divulges the mystery. Look at verse 8. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is, the, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now, under the principalities and powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church uh, the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose uh, which He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, uh, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him." He's talking about this mystery now being revealed that God's hid throughout all ages and it's all being revealed in Christ. You say, preacher, what is this mystery? Well, Paul uh, 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 really outlined it in chapter 2 of Ephesians, verse 11. He says, wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, uh, that at that time ye were without Christ, uh, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of the promise, uh, having no hope and without God in the world. Uh, but now in Christ Jesus, here's the mystery being divulged, uh, ye who sometimes were far off or made nigh by the blood of Christ, uh, for he is our peace, uh, who hath made both one, and he hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us, uh, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments uh, contained in ordinances, uh, for to make in himself of twain one new man, uh, so making peace, uh, 
and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, uh, having slain the enmity thereby, uh, and came and preached peace to you, uh, which were far off, and to them that were nigh. Uh, for, for through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Uh, the mystery is that Jesus Christ made a way for us old sinners to be saved, and that we could be in the body of Christ, that Jews could be in the body of Christ, that He reconciled us all to God. You see, we were at enmity with God. We were against God. We were the enemies of God. Our very sin kept us from God's presence. But Jesus Christ came to forgive us of sin and restore what was broken and make us a vessel that would please God. And I bless the Holy Lamb of God for that. And all what wonderful thoughts from the Scripture. But I'm not going to preach on any of that. I'm interested in verse number 1. Paul said, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Paul said, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And I want to preach with God's help on mandated social distancing. Paul would have liked nothing better to be in an Ephesus and preaching this to him personally. But he was locked up in prison. He was mandated to be socially distanced from the church. And my dear friends, in the course of events the last two days, it has been mandated we could not assemble. And we have to socially distance ourselves from the church. And with that in mind, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about what has been mandated to us? Well, we're going to, if we're going to be biblical, be godly, we're going to do what Paul did. Because while Paul was in captivity, he didn't crawl up the corner in the fetal position and suck his thumb. He did what God called him to do. And so with that in mind, let's look at mandated social distancing. What did Paul do? Can I say, first of all, Paul wrote. He wrote. Matter of fact, if you're a student of the Bible, you know he wrote about half of the New Testament while he was in prison. The Bible says in Romans 15, 15, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God. Paul was writing to them at Rome. In uh, Galatians 6.11, he wrote, writes this, Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. Uh, he's writing to the church at Galatia. In Philemon, verse 19, I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. Uh, I will repay, albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest me, even in thine own self besides. Uh, uh, Paul was writing, he was writing, he wrote. Uh, 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 he was making a difference even though he was in captivity. Uh, he even though he could not unite with the church, uh, he was making a difference by writing. Uh, uh, can I say he was enlightening the saints as to the truths of God's Word. Uh, you and I can uh, uh, be a help to the saints of God. Uh, we can enlighten them to truths that God has showed us. Uh, you can send them a text. You can write them a letter. You can make a phone call. Uh, uh, you can make a difference in the life of somebody else. Uh, he not only enlightened the saints, he encouraged the saints. Uh, Hey, if there's ever time God's people need to be encouraged, uh, it's today. Uh, I mean, we've been gut punched. Uh, we've been sucker punched. Uh, we've been stabbed in the back. Uh, hey, somebody turned us in. Uh, uh, the governor's got enough on his plate that he didn't need to know about us. Uh, how they find out about us? Uh, was it that reporter showed up? I don't know. Uh, was it a neighbor? I don't know. Uh, was it uh, uh, somebody's family member that was worried that you was coming to church? You might get sick. I don't know. Somebody turned us in. Uh, somebody has done us wrong. Uh, now you can get mad about it uh, or you can look around and find a brother that's down uh, and try and encourage them. Uh, hey, don't be overcome. Uh, don't overcome good with evil, uh, but overcome evil with good. Uh, hey, make a difference in somebody else's life. Uh, Paul enlightened uh, the saints. He encouraged the saints. He edified the saints. He built them up. He bared their loads. He was constantly looking out for their welfare. And even though he was afar, he was still making a difference on their behalf. You know, somebody did us wrong. 
But I remind you, God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. They're not getting away with it. It'll be all right. I've had some say, preacher, can't we meet in the parking lot like some of the churches down south are? Well, that's an option. There's only several problems with that. Number one, the way the weather changes around here, first of all, we don't have a PA we could drag out there. We'd have to buy a portable PA, take it out there, take a portable piano, take a, a, an amplifier, take some microphones. And about the time we get out there, the way the weather changes, uh, all of a sudden rain starts blowing in. We've got to drag it all back in, and we're defeated. Secondly, who's to say one of these neighbors didn't turn us in? You think they're going to stand for us having all the cars in the parking lot and you sticking your head out the, uh, uh, the window of your car and me screaming to my lungs through a PA system preaching like I'm doing right now? They're not going to stand for that. They don't like us meeting in the building. I guarantee you they wouldn't like us meeting out there. And then third of all, we're already on the radar. When they start seeing that many cars come in, they'll still say we're breaking the stay-at-home order. So it's a great thought. It just wasn't a viable thought. And the only thing that I could come up with reasonably where we could even begin to resemble what we are is what we're doing right now, live streaming. But can I say, Paul wrote while he was a prisoner. When you're mandated social distance, they can shut you in, but they can't shut you up. Hmm? Can I say this secondly? Not only did Paul write while he was in prison, but while he was in captivity, he also witnessed. Hmm. The Bible says in Acts chapter 26, verse number 2, Paul said, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. And then he begins to preach to him for a while. Then he gets down about verse 27. It says this, King Agrippa, Believest thou the prophets? I know thou believest, that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Paul witnessed Agrippa, the king. He, ripped, he witnessed to everybody in Agrippa's court that day. And can I say, he's still witnessing through that same passage even today. But, but listen, Agrippa didn't trust Christ. Hmm? Uh, Agrippa's in hell today, burning, wishing he'd have listened to that preacher. I want to tell you there have been people that I've quoted uh, 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 what the uh, Scriptures say to, uh, uh, about us assembling. There are people I've quoted what the Constitution says about what I, uh, I've said. And they may have uh, 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 overlooked that. They may have think uh, uh, he's a crazy preacher. But if they die and go to hell, they wish they would have listened. Uh, he witnessed Agrippa. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 22, it says, All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. You see, by the time Paul got to Rome, he's under house arrest. And you know what he, what he was doing at, under house arrest? There was uh, butlers and maids, and there was a whole uh, uh, host of people that worked in Caesar's household. What did Paul do? He was witnessing to them. And when he wrote to the church at Philippi, he told them, All the saints salute you and those of the household of Caesar. What happened? Those people believed in God. Some of the very uh, 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 people that worked for Caesar, uh, 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 the one that Paul appealed to, uh, uh, the one that eventually was going to give Paul his death sentence, uh, uh, some of the ones that worked for him uh, became a believer of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Well, Paul was in captivity. He wrote. He also witnessed. You say, preacher, what can I do? Well, everybody gets junk mail, put a track in, in them uh, self-addressed envelopes and send them out to somebody. Hmm? Hey, uh, when you go out to your mail, you see your neighbor, tell them how good Jesus is. When you still get to go to work, tell them how good Jesus is. When the, all your co-workers are falling apart and they're fearful of all this virus and the, the world coming to an end, you just stand true to Jesus. You let them know you're not afraid, that you walk by faith. You can be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. I thought about what Paul did when he was in captivity. He wrote, he witnessed, but he also went to the Lord in prayer. Paul was a praying man. In Colossians chapter 1, verse number 9, the Bible says this, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Paul said, I, I don't cease to pray for you. 
And not only them, at Colossia, he prayed for everybody that he knew of. He was a man of prayer. Can I say, you may not be able to come to the house of God to worship, but you can get down on your knees where you are and pray. God does hear and answer prayer. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know what to turn the heart of a king? The prayer of a saint. You know what to turn this thing around and, and deal with these uh, 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 politicians' hearts when God's people get serious enough to get a hold of God? Mm. Can I say, not only is your breath in God's hands, so is their breath. What do you do? You pray. Pray. Prayer is what will get this thing turned around. I thought about some other things Paul did while he was in prison. Paul warred a good warfare. And I know I'm not looking up there at the camera. I don't like looking at Aaron and Randy. But when I preach, I don't look up. I look around. And I, You're not here, but in my mind, I'm visioning where you sit. But I thought about this. He warred a good warfare. He wrote to the church at Ephesus in chapter number 6, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Somebody needs to get armed up. Verse number 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I want to tell you something. It don't matter who turned us in. It don't matter who ragged us out. It don't matter who, who's mandated what. All this comes from somebody behind them. And it's called the sorry no good devil. Verse 13 says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having all, done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having uh, on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take uh, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication, in the Spirit, watching thereunto with perseverance and supplication for all saints. We need to get robed in the things of God and then get on our knees and get a hold of God. Uh, Paul warred a good warfare. He didn't win every battle, but he won a lot of them. Second Timothy 4, 7, he said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. You can war a good warfare. You ever seen that movie War Room? A lot gets changed in a prayer closet. But sometimes you've got to put feet on your prayers. I'm going to give you a phone number. Call this number. 1-800-372-7181. 1-800-372-7181. If you need it, text me. I'll text it to you. That is the number to your congressional hotline here in Kentucky. Someone nice will answer the phone. They'll send, they'll ask your name. They'll ask you where you live. They'll tell you who your congressmen are. Tell them you want to send a message to your congressmen and senators. Might even be able to put the governor in there. I don't know. And let them know that you don't appreciate that liquor stores are open, abortion clinics are open, and churches are closed. Let them know that you are pleading for churches to be opened for Easter. Let them know that uh, it is your mandated right by the Constitution to worship. And this isn't right. And you want to get back to church. And then I would add this in because when I call them today, I added this in. Let them know it is an election year and you are going to vote. Hmm? Just let them know. You say, what are you doing? You're fighting a good fight. You're standing up for what you believe in. God expects us to do what we can do than he does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. I can't make the governor let us open up, but God can. But God does expect me to let him know what I think about it. And I did today. I made that phone call. Very, very nice phone call. They'll type down everything you want them to say, and they'll send it to your congressman. Do that. Again, 800-372-7181. Paul wore a good warfare. You can too. What did Paul do? While he was locked up. I believe he, oh, Paul had a whetted appetite. Hmm? I believe Paul looked for the day he was going to walk out of jail and walk back into church. Because this is what he said in 1 Thessalonians 2.17. But we, brethren, 
being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Paul says abstinence makes the heart fonder. He said, I'm just taken away from you for a short while, but I'm greatly desiring to see your face. Uh, Paul desired to get to worship and meet with them again. What can I say? Uh, it's already been said to me by several of you. Preacher, when God does let us come back together again, people are going to come back with a greater appreciation of the church and a greater desire to meet with God. And I'm trusting that that's the case. Some of you will remember a message I preached several years ago on you won't miss the water till the well runs dry. Some may have been taking this privilege for granted. And God just might let us get real good and thirsty. So when we come back, we'll be ready to drink from his fountain. He had a whetted appetite. Can I say this about Paul? Paul, he wrote. He witnessed. He went to the Lord in prayer. He wore a good warfare. He had a whetted appetite. But Paul waited. I'm not a patient person, you know that. I want everything done yesterday. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Paul said this in Romans 8.25, But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Hmm? Galatians 5.5, 5, he wrote, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. He waited for direction. Sometimes we just need to wait for direction from God on what to do. Wait for the answers to come. He waited for discernment. It's one thing to get directions from God. It's another thing to discern how God wants you to do those things. And he waited for deliverance. He wrote in 2 Thessalonians 3, 5, And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Friend, there's coming a day when this won't even be a memory. It hurts right now. Weeping endureth for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. I know it's odd now. It's difficult now. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. and Watch and wait for Him to do the miraculous. And friend, when he does the work, it's complete and it's wonderful. So my dear friends, we're closing all this, I know. These are odd times, these are difficult times, these are unsettling times, disheartening times. But we're not the first ones to ever go through something like this. If God brought them through, he'll bring us through. If the Apostle Paul, who had been stoned on several occasions, left for dead, if he'd been beaten three times, he'd been imprisoned, all those things did not break his spirit. Why should we, we let a little hiccup in our world, in our worship, break our spirit? Put into practice the very things that Paul was an example of. My friend, God too, will bless your efforts. You do realize we have a church tonight because the Apostle Paul was faithful. Yeah. Will there be a church tomorrow? It all depends on whether or not we'll be faithful. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you. That we could have this even feeble opportunity. Thank you for liberty. Thank you for the scriptures. Now help your people to take to heart. Help us to do what we can. And then again, God, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. God, break the hearts of the ungodly that we might see them saved. Break the hearts of the proud that we might see them humbly serving God. 
Break the hearts of those who take for granted the privilege and blessings of God, that they will become thankful for the goodness of God. And then God, from those things that are without, those things that we have no control over, God, we commit them into your hand and trust that you do all things well and that, God, you'll send the answer and the miracles that we need. Bless those now who have heard the Scriptures. Help them to put them into practice. Help them in their daily life to keep trusting, to keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, to keep keeping on while these days unfold before us. Now, Lord, if one person gets saved, it would be worth it all. Lord, if one person gets help, it would be worth it all. So, Father, get glory to your name. Help us this day not to be discouraged or distraught, but to help us this day to look and cling unto Jesus. Help us not to hang our harps on the willows, but to help us to have a song of praise because you truly are worthy to be praised. Bless now, and Lord, until we're able to once again meet through via this stream or however you see fit, Bless your people, and we'll thank you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Good night. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.